I'm James. Well, he's named after me, actually, because um, I'm the most talented and the best looking in the band. So I started playing bass guitar, and like two weeks after I'd had it, we did our first gig. Like, and I couldn't do anything. After two weeks of playing the guitar, you just can't do anything. Nothing. So we got the, the we practiced in the scout hut, and the scout master used to kind of like play acoustic guitar and sort of sit around singing Ginkangulia, whatever scout masters do. And um, we used to get him to tune the guitars and then carry them on the bus, trying not to bang the machine heads to knock them out of tune. So uh, got him to tune the bass and went and did this gig. And the single we got this lad to sing for two songs, and he decided he wasn't going to do it. And got totally bottled out. So like, I volunteered to sing for the gig. So I got totally pissed, totally rat assed and went up and kind of like just made some noises down the microphone and this is like a, a British Legion in Eccles. I'd been in quite a few bands and uh, I decided I was going to give it up and I didn't know what I was going to do in my life and uh, I started to give guitar lessons because I thought I didn't want the music thing just to disappear out of my life. Paul and the original guitar player, Jimmy, were two of my first pupils. The more they came, the more I was beginning to realise that they just weren't responding to it. They, they couldn't quite grasp this idea of, of uh, playing chords in a certain way and things like this, that they had their own distinctive style. They invited me down to a few practices and uh, then that's when the, the trouble for me really started because I went down to this practice and uh, I expected them to be doing things like in through the and if things were perfect. And they just start producing this noise, this random noise. And uh, after about five minutes or something like this, of this noise, certain things, you could start hearing music in it. It was quite, uh, it was very random, very abstract, but there was something in it. And it was that that attracted me to them. We've got a tradition, that's how we feel. And we're really proud of all our past records, right from the start, uh, the awkward ones, especially, you know, as much as now. And we just follow our path, and we can't alter that to get rich or to get famous. Our path is our path. What are you doing there? We think we've managed to um, keep some integrity as people and in the music through a lot of hard times, and we have gone through a lot of hard times. Um, and you know, we think the music's great. We think the music's very special. I mean, obviously there's going to be a lot of challenges there and a lot of rubbish individually we've got to come to terms with. I mean, if you've got, like tonight, if you've got 9,000 people out there saying how amazing you are, you know, it, it's hard enough as that someone to rub, to rub off and you to go, oh yeah, I am, aren't I? Sometimes I think we really, we really deserve it when we do a fantastic concert. And I know that they're cheering. They're not just cheering us, they're cheering what's been happening, what's, what's coming off stage, what reaction it's having on them, and that they're being lifted, we're being lifted. And sometimes it really comes together. It'd be nice musical break because it'd be totally weird, wouldn't it? different kind of relationships within the three of us. Um, sometimes I've been closer to Tim, other times I've been closer to Jim, you know, and it, it changes a lot like that. Now that there's seven of us, uh, the interaction is that much greater. But, yeah, there's some, there's some very solid friendships in there, and there are some acquaintances. Some kind of poodle, I think. New kind of Afro hairstyle. If there was one thing that we got criticised for, around about 1985, 86, from people who saw us live. They loved what we were doing, but they said it was very insular. Like the audience just watched these people on stage. There was no interaction between us and the audience whatsoever. And that was a criticism that got through to us that we can't stand in the audience and see how we are. And we could tell from what they were saying that yes, that was true. So in a way we had to learn how to open up what we were doing on stage to the audience so that they could see what was going on. Adrenaline produces a fight or flight reaction and uh, we tend to fight <laughs> but it, you get this kind of like whoa, real buzz. The people who come to see our concerts they have really high expectations and uh, you know that you know, you're top the, the gig you did last time with her. 
and that's that can be quite fun. The lyrics are quite hard and they're often very self-critical or self-abusive. So I think the audience wouldn't think that I was a particularly nice person. I've not tried to make myself out to be a particularly nice person. I just try and write lyrics that reflect me. So some of them are really nice, some of them aren't. And, uh, some of them are funny and some of them are depressed. And, you know, there's a big variety, I hope. The early James, we used to, for two years, we used to hate it, hate it. We were terrible. And we used to kind of like, just put our heads down and play and keep really quiet. And I used to dance because I was just so nervous. I used to dance really aggressively. Um, whereas now most of the concerts are really good, and, but only a few of them are really magical. There's no feeling like it <laughs> for us. Uh, you, you know, you can't sleep for the whole, that's the whole night gone, because you're not going to sleep. And your whole body's like ringing, and you just feel like, you know, you're, just, you're very alive. Uh, and that is wonderful. 